Hi everybody! Hi! <laughs> this is uh, Kim and Jennifer and uh, we're the owners of the Fleece and Harmony Woolen Mill in Belfast, Prince Edward Island in Canada. Um, today is episode 11 of our podcast and you're viewing this uh, starting on April 26th. Um, we film on Tuesdays and then we launch the video on Fridays. So it's actually Tuesday here, but when you're seeing it, it's going to be Friday. Um, for those of you that have been uh, with us for all the episodes, you're going to notice that this episode is a little bit different today. We've done, um, we're going to do a couple different things. Uh, for those that are viewing for the first time, welcome, but this is not our usual format. <laughs> yes. So we'll explain why. Um, this is, uh, it's, uh, been a bit of a gloomy time here in more ways than one. Um, the weather has been raining how many days in a row now? I think this is eight. And by the time the sun comes out on Friday, hopefully it'll be a full 10 days of no sun. Right. Which is a lot, even for by maritime standards. Yes. And <laughs> it's cold, a little bit colder than usual for this time of year. Um, the rain may not be a bad thing. We don't have flooding or anything right. like some places do. So we're thankful for that for sure. But it's just kind of dreary. Um, also, we want to talk about uh, something that happened uh, here locally. Uh, today is actually election day in Prince Edward Island for the provincial legislature. And tragically, one of the candidates that was running for the Green Party in this election was um, had a tragic accident with his son on Friday. Um, they were canoeing and um, Josh Underhay is the candidate. He was 36 years old and his son Oliver, who was six, were in a canoe um, in a local river and uh, they had an accident. So it's been really, really, um, everybody's heart is breaking for those that family and for um for his wife and the son uh, his other son but uh it's a tragedy but it at one point it kind of made us feel hopeful because there's so much um, news about politics and politicians these days that is not positive it's hard not to be cynical but here on prince edward island all of the candidates in all the other parties actually suspended their campaigning just a few days before their election um, to take time to honor Josh and his son. Uh, they even went so far as to remove all of their signs from his district and just left his sign, or all of their signs from his district and they just left his Josh's signs up as a, as a tribute to him. Um, he was a very well-loved person in the community, a teacher at one of the local schools and a musician. And um, in this day and age of um, cynicism and corrupt politics and everything, it really was um, heartwarming to see how everybody kind of pulled together and, and uh, honored um, somebody else from their, their community. Yeah. Um, and I think one thing that I've really felt thankful for, um, and there have been actually another, a number of other tragedies that took place over the Easter weekend. It was just the worst Easter weekend ever. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of people grieving on this island right now. And one of the things we love about living here and having left our lives in the big city, particularly me, because I really did live in very close proximity to my neighbors, like it very tightly packed, mm -hmm. nearly touching. Um, is that you get a community and it's wonderful. You know, if you need a favor or if somebody gets ill, they all pull together. Um, but at the same time, then you also share collective grief when something bad happens. Mm -hmm. We all feel it. And it's, it's not, it's like the opposite of isolation. Mm -hmm. Um, but that comes with good and bad, bad times. So mm -hmm. we all celebrate together and we all, grieve together and it's been a really hard time for so many people here and we do we are so proud to have been featured in McLean's magazine and a bunch of other news and media outlets as being the province that cares more about people than they do about politics because literally the final push would have been um, this last few days of campaigning and the entire thing um, ground to a complete and utter halt mm -hmm. out of respect for this family and uh, yeah, it's been rough and we're, we're lambing too, so we've been busy. So we're just gonna kind of sit down and have tea today yeah. and chat a little bit about what our lives have been like for the last crazy, really four weeks now of lambing and the two yeah. weeks since we spoke to you last. And we're even going to drink 
some Lady Baker's tea. Yes. Uh, which we never do. We never drink on camera <laughs> because we feel like we should be focusing on talking. Yeah. But we're comforting ourselves with some of this tea, a little bit of a self tea ministry. Yes. Um, as Catherine explained, it can be very last valuable episode. in the last episode. Yeah. So, uh, and then we do have some knitting stuff as well. Yeah. But, but really that's it. It's impossible for us to pretend um, that there's nothing going on. Yeah. Um, and it really, we, sh we don't want to. We really try to be as genuine as possible. <laughs> yeah. And today um, would have been pretty hard just to be, you know, laughing as we normally do and so forth. Yeah. So we that's not to say we're going to laugh a little. Though. Yeah. We're yeah. Not, not, not to say that we're not without, you know, gratitude and hope because that's, that's just our nature. Um, but for people that are used to seeing us in the other episode, it's, it is a little bit different. Yeah, and so. to see everybody come together really is a beautiful thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the support for so. the family has been tremendous. Mm -hmm. And there is a GoFundMe set up. I'll put the link to it in our show notes. Mm -hmm. And it's doing extraordinarily well, as it should as it should be. Mm -hmm. Because um, there is, of course, a mom, a wife, and another young son left behind. Yeah. Um, and all their extended family to deal with this, you know, for well, for the rest of their lives, really. Yeah. Yeah. So if the tone is a little different today, that's why we're, yeah. uh, that's, we're, <laughs> we're, that's what we're thinking about yeah. in the back of our minds. And we didn't so, want to not record. So, right. So we're going, we're going ahead. Right. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> on that happy note, if you do like our videos, we would love for you to give them a thumbs up or subscribe to our channel because uh, it helps us get seen and it helps other people learn about our channel and it does make it um, more rewarding for us the more people that watch and our last one did really well so yeah. thank you to everybody who commented and, yeah. and gave us the thumbs up we love the thumbs up yeah <laughs> we did get a few thumbs downs again we, get, we just assume they're bots yeah <laughs> we're, pa we're past it now so to kind of lighten things up a little bit it was funny because we we're planning um, a special episode for Mother's Day coming up right. two weeks from now and uh, I should say we've also been preparing for the Knitter's Frolic, which is tomorrow yes. if you're watching this on its release date. So tomorrow, Saturday the 27th, I'll be at the Japanese Canadian Cultural Center um, just north of Toronto. And uh, I'll be there at the Purple Pearl booth, sort of hoping to greet um, people who are interested in seeing me or learning about our yarn or who have tried our yarn um, from shopping at the Purple Pearl. So if you're in the area, I would love for you to come out and say hi. And it's the first time you've been to a show with our Yes. Yeah, yeah, we've never done a trade show of any kind yeah. before. And uh, I've I've taken advantage of Jennifer from the Purple Pearls. Another, another Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so she owns the Purple Pearl and she's agreed to let me share her booth. Just, you know, kind of like taking me under her wing to go. And yeah, uh, we'll do our first show together, which is going to be really fun. And we're both really looking forward to meeting each other. So come on out to the Purple Pearl booth. So anyway, we were looking through um, some photos for our mo Mother's Day episode, and um, we honestly, even despite our sort of subdued mood, could not help <laughs> but laugh at these baby photos right. of us that we found. So I think you introduce yours first, because I know that mine is... You were a beautiful baby. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually don't think that there are, I have any pictures that are as good as yours. Good. Yeah. <laughs> no so one does. Pretty, they're all, they're <laughs> all kind of standard. So, and uh, when I was an infant, my mom was working, or my mother was working, and uh, my grandmother, Nanny Wenzel, took most of the pictures, and she was actually, um... I was going to say accomplished photographer, but that's not it. She just took a lot of pictures. Well, she was serious about it. She was it. serious yeah. about it, yes. So uh, not professionally trained. No, no, but you had to use the camera. Yes, you had yeah. to use the camera at the time. So she, most of the baby pictures uh, that are of me were taken by her. So it was like the standard, okay, taking the bath in the kitchen sink oh, okay. and out in the, in the garden because she also was a gardener and stuff like that. So um, I actually don't have any of those pictures. So I've written to her mother to send send me one. So I'm not exactly sure what she's gonna send. I, <laughs> oh, I have I have a couple bets about what's gonna be in. The oh, box. I thought you had found one. Okay, no, 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 no. all filled with suspense. So, then. Yeah. So yes, it'll be a surprise even to me. Okay. So roll tape then. Here's yeah. here's Kim's baby photo. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, okay. So, so clearly we have no idea what that looked like. However, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was lovely. Yeah. Um, now, myself, on the other hand, um, I think I've changed a lot over the years. And I had a strange thing with my skull uh, growing up. It was a little bit not flat. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I could have easily played an extra in Star Trek, I think, as a Romulan. Is that the ones with the... I'm not a big Trekkie. What, what's for? <laughs> anyway, I, I think I was a Trekkie at heart or I was channeling yeah. something from Star Trek. And then also I had very little hair. Yes. For quite a long time. For a long time. Yeah. And which is so ironic because I have so much yeah. hair that my my head is literally partially shaved back here. You, yeah. you would never know it. But my, my hair stylist just takes a razor to the middle of my head every time I go. Yeah. Uh, and it's still... I have plenty. It actually so, it takes two days to dry when you wash it if you don't blow it dry. Right? Yeah, it yeah. Will, it, yeah, it would get depending on how damp it is here. Yeah. It might never dry. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so my this is one of my favorite photos because it's so hilarious, and you can tell that we've become very humble through being farmers because I don't mind showing it but anyway. <laughs> After all that build up, it's really cute. Here's here's me as a baby. <laughs> Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> and I had a couple actually, other gems too. Yeah, no, know, as delightful as that was, <laughs> with the lovely green hand knit sweater. Yes, that is hand knit. Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> I think it had a white ribbon. Is that that one? Anyway, uh, there is also one just as cute yes. of me naked in the kitchen sink. Oh, but yeah. Okay. But I, I, <laughs> I was thinking of the one smelling the tulip. Yeah, but I have like a little pot pie hat yeah. on, so that doesn't nearly capture the. Oh, the whole... Yeah, world. and so the funniest thing is, you can't really tell in that photo, but when I was even younger and like on baby food, I only liked carrot yes. baby food. Yes, So it was she all would only I would eat. eat carrots. So I was on a 100% carrot <laughs> diet, which I think was actually a thing, like a diet fad not too long ago. But I just so know. you know, if you eat that much carrot <laughs> only, you will turn orange. Yeah. So at points, that face was also orange. Yeah. You, so you were the precursor to Donald Trump. Yeah. So I remember my mother saying to my nanny Wenzel, doesn't she have the most beautiful glow? And my grandmother said, for God's sake, Carol, she's orange. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, eventually I did learn to eat almost everything, I yes. think. Because now yes. I'm not, I didn't grow up to be a picky eater no. uh, as an adult. But no. yeah, so that we thought was funny. Yeah. Anyway, though, that's always good for a chuckle, that, yeah. that one. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so that's where it all began. I wonder if we should do a thread on Ravelry. Show People us your baby pic. pic? Yeah. Oh, yeah, please do. Okay. Especially if you're wearing that. hand knits. Yeah. Yeah, and then we'll show the best ones in our Mother's Day episode. Great yeah. idea. Okay. Great I'm idea. Do, Join I'll in the it. fun, particularly if you had no hair and were yeah. orange and looked <laughs> like an alien. Yeah. By all means. <laughs> See if you can top mine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do that. I'm yeah. going to do that. All Perfect. Right. So yeah. there'll be a baby photo ravelry. Uh, threat. Yeah, start and we'll get Friday. ready. And yeah. and if you uh, you can just share it there, but if you don't mind us showing it, yes, then let, let us, us know. know if you don't let mind. Us not, yeah, if you so don't, that mind. We don't have to chase down permission. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, our hearts will be fun. broken if we get a really good one and we're not allowed to share it. <laughs> <laughs> no anyway, pressure. it's a bit of a cliche, but the baby photos are always fun. Yeah. Okay, so that's great. Yeah, yeah. And if you're in hand nets, it's perfect. Even better. Yeah. Which we all should be of our age, yes. I think, yeah. most likely. So if there are um, um, pictures in the kitchen sink, do we need to put little black uh, <laughs> squares? <laughs> you're responsible for censoring your own yeah. content. <laughs> okay. Uh, right. I should have done that one on mine, and they could have guessed who it was. Yeah. <laughs> Over the eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> all right, very good. Okay, okay. so let's talk uh, whips. Yeah, so uh, I have nothing. Okay. Okay. Not a surprise. There hasn't been a lot of knitting. No, I have no. to say. And I was so desperate for at knit night to actually have something that I could knit mm -hmm. um, that I didn't have to really think about is that I started doing a miniature uh, sock swatches for our sock yarn. Mm -hmm. So it's really like I'm really going to knit just a tiny sock for the colors of our sock mm -hmm. yarn. So that's what I was working on, which is not really worthy to show anybody right. in public. No. It's... 
But yeah. let's talk about midnight just a bit because you did. So okay. yesterday, Rachel shows up last night, yeah. which would be Monday because our midnight is Monday, 6.30 to 8.30 yeah. every Monday. I want to say too, if anybody is visiting in the summer and yes, they want to come to want, the, yeah, yeah, everybody can come everybody to our can midnight come. Really yeah. fun. Yeah. yeah. So Rachel comes in and she wasn't with her normal traveling partner. And she couldn't get in the door. She had this tray with yeah. stuff on it. And she was like, oh my gosh, I almost spilled the sauce. Sauce! There's sauce. <laughs> okay, and then she's like, oh, here, can you take this whipped cream? Whipping cream! And sauce. And sauce. Oh my goodness. So she brought this butterscotch cake with the hot sauce floating, and the whipped cream floating, floating something. Yeah. Floating butterscotch, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we had that and just, just you know, we can never cancel. No. <laughs> You're like, should we have it night on Easter Monday? I'm like, yeah, hell yeah. Because <laughs> I need Ra- I need my stuff from Rachel. <laughs> and she really owed did herself with yeah. the sauce, traveling yeah. alone in a car. Yes. And I don't uh, know. getting I don't it out here. That's God right. I never bless even her. thought about it. Yeah. Traveling so it. delicious. So yeah. that was wonderful. And then we had our two of our many, we seem to have collected many bummer lambs, as yes. they're called, who yeah. don't really need the bottle, but will not leave you alone until That's they right. get some. So they came out um, raw. Roger and Jay Leno, which is a female, but she's got Jay Leno's hair. Yes. So, but, you know, sometimes the name, you just can't, <laughs> you just can't argue with the name. Yeah. We don't care about gender. Yep. <laughs> so she's Jay Leno and she came out with Roger and, uh, the knit night attendees got to feed them again. Yeah. And uh, it's the one thing great about bottle lands is they don't squawk when they're away from their no. mother because they really don't have a mother. I, I think I'm their mother. Yeah. And so they're perfectly comfortable coming out here and just cruising around. Although yeah. Jay was a little nervous. It was her first time. Yeah. But Roger her. is old hat now. He yeah. started actually freestyling around the place. Yes, exactly. and uh, they're such a joy, and nobody could believe how much a lamb can grow in, in a, a week. week. Yeah, um, they pretty much probably nearly doubled in size, or forty per fifty percent. Yeah, at probably. Least. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. they're like getting kind of big. Yeah. Um, now we really have to feed them on the floor because you can't take yeah. arms anymore. So that was fun. So yeah, knit night's a lot of fun. So um, we can't promise lambs every week, but. No. Uh, you do, uh, it is really nice actually yeah. to get together and have a pleasant chat yeah. and knit. Yeah. And I think if you don't live in a community like we live where in, where you feel very connected to other people, because I know I certainly didn't feel that way when I lived in Toronto, you were more mm-hmm. likely to be at war with your neighbors than uh, because their you know, eaves trough was touching yours or something yeah. like that, than yeah. uh, you were to actually share a real sense of community. Um, you know, I think knit nights are a great place to find to find that. So yeah. if you're not participating in one, I'm sure there's one near you. Yeah. And uh, seek it out. Sh- yeah. Seek it out. You should first. go. Yeah. yeah. Cause you know, it's still at first you're like, Oh my gosh, it's another evening of work. Yeah. Um, because we do, you know, have to host and whatever, but now we wouldn't miss, we wouldn't, we no. wouldn't miss it. Yeah. No, we, we have a it. good, we have a, there's knitting that gets done and mistakes are made because <laughs> and then more, redone yeah. yeah so more whipping and ripping yeah but it's uh because we're having a good time and, yeah and uh yeah so that's actually related to whipping and ripping so yes. i'll first talk about my saint lunaire which i'm what i'm calling it for short because i don't know how to pronounce the third word still <laughs> Um, so it took me, um, I had to start over as you know, because I decided to not do it in our fingering and our flock fingering and switch to Elden Lace, which is a bit like, like light for the pattern, but I thought it would work because our yarn is so cozy and, and mm-hmm. fluffy, but I did make a mistake in my swatching, um, a few times and had to swatch this cuff. I think I've, this is my fourth or fifth time I've knit it now. And now there's a yarn over missing. And with everything else that was going on, I just really couldn't cope. So I think today I'll go back and uh, insert my yarn over and then carry on. So I'm not 100% confident about the yarn yet. Um, You probably can't see the detail um, from where you are, but I'm going to knit this entire sleeve, soak it and block it and make sure that the fabric is not too light Mm -hmm. to show Mm -hmm. the stitch work. (laughs) I I keep saying I think it's going to be fine. Yeah, I think it will too, but I want to make sure before I get too far. So anyways, it's, this is it. Two weeks. Woo-hoo. But just so you know, this is the fourth one. Yeah. And I now have this completely memorized. Right. So that oh, was good. good. Yeah. Yeah. And it is fun. You know what? I think it's going to take me a while. And I have another um, test knitting commitment for Jennifer Beale in the meantime. So I'm probably not going to cruise right through this one. 
Uh, and by the way, when I say it took me a while to get the correct needle size, the correct needle size is actually two wow. millimeter. Wow. I don't have anything smaller. Um, and then I fiddled around a little bit with the sizing because I wanted the arm a little bit tighter um, than what the specs were for mm -hmm. the medium. And so, um, yeah, there was quite a bit of fiddling to actually get it to where I think I have the fabric and the sizing that I'm going to want for my final sweater. Totally worthwhile investment, but then um, things sort of went a little bit wonky around here and I just definitely couldn't... Um, Take, well, taking and yeah. trying to figure out a yarn over. Yeah. So anyways, and then knit night was coming. So I did want to be able to knit at knit night because I'm famous for not knitting at knit night at all. <laughs> In fact, I just said to a couple friends the other day, they're like, we don't knit. Come anyway, I don't knit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not knitting at knit night. Anyway, in the meantime, Ash Alberg launched this beautiful collection yeah, of shawls really called nice. Unfolding. And there's one for every sign in the zodiac, although according to Ash, you should be picking the one based on your moon sign, not your sun oh. sign. Oh, why is that? Yeah, well, most people know I think it's their sun sign, yes. like I'm an Aries, but there's yes. an opposite sign that's your moon sign. Oh. That's another part of your personality. Oh. I'm no astrology expert, so I don't want to get too deep into it, but you're okay. supposed to pick it based on your moon sign. I can't oh. even remember what mine is now. Oh, okay. Anyway, know. that's Ash to go really deep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> into the into the uh, sort of I don't want to say theology, but spirit spirituality behind mm -hmm. the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I highly recommend checking out this unfolding collection. It's yeah. amazing. So I am actually doing Virgo because uh, they designed it in our Elden lace yarn. So I, but I'm not doing it in the color. So the original pattern was done in lichen, and I'm actually doing it in pearl. And this was a batch of pearl that turned out a tiny bit extra blue, um, but I'm fine with it in my project. So I probably wouldn't have put it on for sale anyway, but it's actually more a little bit like our November sky color. It's I kind think. of like perfectly in the middle. Yeah, or I maybe I mislabeled it. I don't, I think it might be November sky. Well, it's more gray than November sky. It doesn't look like my water shawl. Anyway, I screwed it up and I'm using it in my, in this Virgo project now. So, um, of course you're seeing a picture of the, uh, the finished project. It's beautiful. I'm a sucker for anything with fringe. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think, you know, that always seems like a pain in the butt to go do that after you're done knitting, but I think it really, really, really makes this project. Right. Ash has designed it in a very generous proportion. It uses yeah. two full skeins of our Elden, which is a thousand yards of lace. Well, knitting. that's what I like about Ash's patterns is that they're they're generous yes so the shawls aren't skimpy and the stoles yeah. are generous you can really wrap yeah. it around and yeah it has to make sense I think I mean that just makes sense like yeah. if you're gonna knit something do it in a proportion that will be really wearable right yeah and not so anyway I'm actually really, really enjoying it. So I just did this yesterday and I'm probably gonna work on it more today because it's a really relaxing project and there's just something so simple about a few little eyelets and it can look like a little bit, I don't know, eyelets sometimes can go either way. Like they don't look super sophisticated, but yet in this design, I just love them. Right. Yeah, so it is simple, but I think the fringe and the delicate sort of nature of the fabric and everything really makes it work. Mm -hmm. And I think it'll just be a beautiful thing to either wear as a shawl right. or put on your lap or whatever. So, and there are 11 other gorgeous shawl designs um, that came out at the same time and they're really really wide variety in techniques and stitch patterns and colors and um, Everything so really a lot of work went into it So it's again called unfolding and you can check it out on Ash's Ravelry store mm. and uh, Of course, I'll put their details so you can yeah. find it below. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm gonna do that now Oh, and I am alternating of course yes. always alternate even though it's very you know it's it's just a shawl I know it'll look better if I if I avoid any type of mm -hmm. pooling whatsoever even though it's a really light color you might be able to get away with it but by the time you figure out you can't yeah it's too late right um so I did take the trouble to do that so while we're talking about ash I wanted to show we do carry um some other things by ash in our shop so there is this beautiful um gauge ruler mm -hmm. that we carry that um that's been made and it's it's really good because you've got a square the four inches or 10 centimeters yeah, for, your by 10 centimeter for your gauge to count you've got the needle gauge on the top um these actually have been selling really well yeah they're really really handy and nice and the it's just it's very organic and i love the smell of it because it's burnt wood yeah <laughs> oh it's something it's kind of like Going out to the campfire. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't think I sniffed oh, it. Oh, yeah, it's sniffable. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Make a tea out of that. <laughs> and it's, it's very, uh, it's precise. So even yeah. though it's, uh, it's. <laughs> they're very well made. made. They're very well made. Yeah, it's always nice to have a handmade thing instead of a plastic thingy from mm. some giant corporation. Right. And there's also soft block. Yep. Yeah. In three different well. sizes. In three different sizes that we carry. And again, made the same, the same way. And they're just lovely. Yep. They're nice to look at. Yeah. I love the texture of the wood. It's just beautiful. Yeah. So those are yeah, uh, they're really a great. They're keepsake too. Yeah. Nice gift for knitters. Yeah. And it just looks, uh, I had a, the pair of plastic ones and it's just not, it's just not the same. You know, there's something to be said for natural products. Right. Wood. Yeah. yeah. It's so, warm, cozy, nice texture. So call out yeah. to Ash on, on those as well. Yeah. Great. They're really great. So, um, I should talk about, I, we got a question on uh, the YouTube comments, actually, about swatching. Okay. And Hard think, to believe since we talked about it so much Yes, already. I know. So, I think uh, it was a really good question, though. So, I want to talk about uh, the question. And the question was, if um, pattern designers take into account that you have to do a swatch for the sizing when they're giving the recommended length of the, of the yarn that you need, and um, I can't answer for pattern designers, but I'll give an answer <laughs> about that. And um, also about, um, you know, it, it's, how, do you play yarn chicken? Like how precise is the actual count of the Never yarn? Never play yarn chicken. Yeah, don't play yarn chicken. <laughs> so first of all, the swatching, um, the more generous the swatch you make, the better. But at the same time, you do have considerations about the amount of yarn that you have. So it's kind of a balance. But you can knit a swatch and almost everybody recommends that you wash and block your swatch before you knit. And that's the right thing to do. You need to be careful if you're worried that you don't have enough yarn that you wash and block your swatch carefully so that you don't felt it. And if you don't felt it and it's in good condition, knit your project. And if you're running out of yarn, you can unravel your swatch and use it to finish up. And let's face it, unless you've made a big mm -hmm. error, you're usually on a bind off or just a little bit of a, a section that's left to do by the time you'd have to unravel your swatch to mm -hmm. do it. So when we, uh, also when we um, do our kits, we try to leave five to 10% extra yarn and um, sometimes you'll have a little bit more than that left. Sometimes you'll have left left but when we do that that's what we do and that's how we purchase yarn as well for projects five to ten percent more than the recommended so the thing to keep in mind when you're trying to make that decision when you're looking at a pattern that was the amount of yarn that the test knitter or the designer got using that needle size that she she or he is recommending and the um, exact yarn and the gauge so if you, in the pattern, the way that it's written. So if you make any changes to the pattern, or if your gauge is a little bit off from the pattern size, or you use a different needle, or your yarn doesn't behave exactly perfectly, you're gonna need more yarn. Probably. Yeah, any pattern modifications, sleeve length. Yeah, that's right, any, any modification, you want your sleeve a little bit longer, you want a little extra room in the hip, like anything. So you're just better off to buy a certain percentage of yarn. Um, we, I think we've mentioned before, we've been sending yarn to people desperate. They've got four inches left on the top of a sleeve cap or they've got the worst know, yeah. Yeah, bind off to do. And yeah. the truth is, is that because all of our yarn is small batch produced and uh, hand dyed, is that no two batches are exactly alike. So if you, if people come back and say six months later, or went one the same batch, <laughs> went the yeah. same batch, we probably don't have it. So the fix is uh, a facsimile. Yeah, better best. be safe than sorry. It wouldn't even yeah. be remotely close. Yeah. But neither would a lot of massive dialogues yeah, and that's commercial right mills yeah, either. Well, it's that's just that ours are so small, we go through them so fast. Yeah. But I'm thinking, you know, if you're, if you're a large yarn company, they're going through those giant dye labs pretty fast too. So yeah. in general, it's just a good practice to make sure you have lots of extra. Um, and I don't do, I hate yarn chicken. Like I yeah. will, because I'm thinking, we see those pictures of people, we were talking about this at midnight last yeah. night, and they're like, oh, I have four inches left. And I'm like, yes, and you just spent the last four of hours of your life in extreme anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> It's what true. is fun about that? Yeah. No matter how satisfying it is to make it, yeah. I couldn't live through the drama of yeah. not knowing if I was yeah. going to get there for the last, you know, 
four to six hours at least because yeah. I think the ball starts to look like it's getting small really quickly yes that's after right after a while so it's very hard to guess so the best uh, recommendation we can make is uh, I don't know if the designers have taken into account the swatch even though all every designer recommends a swatch um, you can use it if you have to and you've had to do that before oh I've okay. absolutely yeah, yeah and still been short which is oh, okay. my lesson yeah and when did where did you have to order the yarn from England that wasn't was because of that. Oh, it wasn't? Yes, that was because of that. <laughs> I didn't even mean to play yarn chicken on that one. I don't oh. know what happened. Oh. I thought I had plenty. Anyway, yes, that's right. I did have to order it from England, and then it all pilled. Oh. oh so I can't even wear the sweater. And yes, I know about the gleaner. <laughs> yeah. I am so bitter about that sweater. It was a full lace cardigan with pockets and, it the, was and a big shawl collar, and it was yeah. it's completely destroyed with pilling. However, yeah. anyway... Um, <laughs> I actually had to make the sweater sw smaller the time I was thinking about because right. I was using our yarn and I even I know like I can't map dye it to match for my own project either. I mean, I just yeah. can't dye it to match. There's no way. Yeah. Some of the fleeces are white. Some of them are more yellow or yeah. ink and is, is, is absolutely no chance. So I actually ended up making like a cropped sweater yeah. that I'm only comfortable wearing <laughs> tank top under now. It's fine. Yeah, I still wear it. Yeah. Anyway, um, better not to, and you yeah. can always do something with the extra yarn. Yeah, and I don't typically do swatch, um, I swatch in pattern a lot. Like, I'll just mm -hmm. start, if, if there's a yes. pocket lining or a yes. sleeve or yes. a section. Which is I, a good way to do it as yeah, well. Yeah, and I mean, you don't get lucky very often, but at least, and I, I think, like, for the St. Lunaire Griquet that I'm working on now, it's actually very valuable to um, check the, the finished, um, dimensions of the sleeve cuff and stuff like that as I went along so I'm happy that I didn't spend all that time just knitting a square or yeah. a circle for no yeah. reason yeah. because every time I did it I actually got value valuable information about how the sweater was going to turn mm -hmm. out more so than what you would in just a square swatching yeah. so you know I, I, I find that's okay and then you're really not using any extra yarn at right. all but I just I, some of it, I did that one so many times that I did have to throw the yarn out because it was so untwisted. Because you had knitted. Because <laughs> I kept worked. casting it on and I do oh, okay. a half twist. Oh, okay. In my cable cast on. Oh, okay. and it had been so bungled by the time. Yeah. I, that all, I did use, lose a little bit of yarn, but I have plenty. So, yeah. so, so better good. safe than story. Is, sorry. Yeah. Better safe than story <laughs> is the, mo the moral of that story. Yeah. So. For sure. And also, it stresses out your LYS yes. when you show up looking yeah. for us to save your project. Because we really want to. Yeah, we would love to, but it just stresses us out so much. Yeah. Like, no, I don't have it. My gosh, like, we feel responsible uh, yeah. <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. So, um, better to have extra. Yeah. And there's been lots of great projects now for stash busting yeah. and using extra. And, yeah. Yeah. Sure. So. Make a hat. And we were actually talking last night again at knit night about the fact that, uh, there was a, a customer that came to the shop that is a hand spinner and she spins, you know, however much she has of the fleece that she's working on. And she's been, and she had the most beautiful shawl on and it was, the yarns weren't even the same weight. They were different fleeces. They were different fibers. And the way that she knit it, she knit it in sections so that each yarn had its own little section. And she just made it as wide as it took to, to use up the yarn that she had. It was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. She really has a knack for... Creative. Cre yeah, yeah, creative knack for the stitch that she used and everything. But, you know, there's lots of ways to use up your yarn. Yeah. I think so... Then we had uh, an official question on our Ravelry thread where it's Ask Us Anything. And uh, this one is from uh, Lace Wing on Heather. I love that name. Hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> Lace Wing on Heather. She actually did a sweater out of the, um, the, she bought the Beach Day shawl kit and then broke it apart and made the sweater out of the colors. And it turned out really nice. Mm, it's a really beautiful. nice picture. Anyway, she asked if there was a thread on Ravelry for specifically for Fleece and Harmony projects or patterns that you've done, Jennifer, that you've designed. Oh, yeah. No, but I assume we're going to put one up now. Yes, we will. Okay, yeah. done. <laughs> so that one's done. So that sounds those, lovely. Yeah. yeah. So there'll be a place. And uh, thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. Great idea. Yeah. So uh, so then that's that's it. Cool. Now a shop update. What did we want to talk about? We were talking about the, oh, we did the, the accessories, but yes. we also want to let everybody know that we sell mini skeins. Yeah. And they're really hard to find on the site. I'm not sure why, what I called them 
I love this basket. I think it's because they're listed as mini skeins and things tend to come up alphabetically and it's a bit confusing. But I'm going to put a link to where you can purchase these and you can, um, they're in air and weight only. Yeah. But you can order any color and they come with free shipping. Right. Um, so we just wanted to let everybody know that we have these. So as you can see, we have a full basket full of various colors here. They're great for little color work projects. Um, they're 25 little yards. Little stripy hats. They're 25 yards of our Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what the grams would be. Yeah. So if you have projects where you just need a little hit of color. Yeah. And you I'm don't want to buy it. And we don't want to talk about this color anymore. <laughs> yes, let's look at this. It's what your sweater was supposed to be made yes. of. Bonfire. Oh, I can yeah. still talk about it. Okay. It's not, it's not traumatic. It's not painful. Okay. No. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, these are, I think they're listed as mini skeins. Yeah. And that's why people are having a hard time finding them. So I don't know yeah. what a, how I should change that. But in any case, they do exist. Uh, they're a great way to either just try out our yarn or do a color work hat or mm -hmm. something where you want to combine a bunch of different colors without the huge investment of buying full skeins in every color. Right, yeah. So a lot of people, I think, do not know about these at all. Right. So we just wanted to mention them. And yeah, this is a lovely, great. this is like heaven right here. I know. Just I just thought it's cheerful. It's, cheerful. it's cheerful. It's very cheerful. Yeah. I'm sure there's even more colors down at the bottom. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's all kinds of... Uh, goodies in here. So yeah. we do sell quite a bit of those in the summer when people come but in. But you can order any color that we have. Yeah, uh, and you could do a beautiful striped hat. Yeah. 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 It would be a bit much to get a full sweater out of them, but yeah. 25 yards <laughs> in a shot, then you should probably just buy a full skein. Yeah. Back to our discussion you on here. You could do a hundred colors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's All that. Right. So the only other thing we've been up to is obviously helping lambs be born and bottle yeah. feeding lambs and, uh, it's been going pretty well. Yeah. I think relatively speaking, we were very, very tired about a week ago mm -hmm. when we were still in the thick of things. And now we're down just to the final few stragglers that always happens at the end. Either they got bred late or they're just taking their time when yeah. they happen to have a slightly longer gestation period because of their breeding or genetics. And we probably have nine or 10 to go. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So we're kind of down to like one birth a day right. or maybe every couple days. Yeah. So everybody's feeling a little bit more well rested, which is probably a good thing with all the things that we've had to contend with yeah. uh, outside of yeah. just being farmers. And then there's um, uh, the things that come with after, you know, the lambs aren't out and then and they're we, great for eternity. Yeah. You have to keep them alive. They, they need to be, yeah, <laughs> we need to give them, um, uh, I was going to say vaccinations, but you, there's a, uh, you, there's uh, this area of where we're farming is very low in a, a micro mineral called selenium. So all the lambs that are born in this area have to have a little injection of selenium and vitamin E when they're born um, to really boost that, that uh, micro mineral. So you have to do that for all the lambs. And we're at 91 lambs right now. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And if they don't get that, it will absolutely be fatal. Yeah. Like, it, it's actually every living creature that would be living here, but we tend to get it in foods that we yeah. eat. And we supplement the ewes with a mineral, a special mineral that has a percentage of selenium in, in it here. And it works together with vitamin E. There's a whole big yeah. thing about that but um so we have to do that you do uh, some other like you do health checks regularly and all of those kind of things so uh, the all the work it's not just over when the yeah. lambs are on uh, no it, it's actually it it's the most dreaded part because of the lack of sleep but the yeah. real work begins when they get out in the world and yeah. start trying to injure themselves yeah. which you know any child will do yeah uh, except we have you know 80 to 100 of them to look after so you yeah. have to be observing a lot to make sure everybody's acting normal yeah. um, they're all active and perky and ears are up and tails are wiggling and mm -hmm. you know I mean I don't know if you've ever you know you literally have to walk by a group of 20 lambs and be like that one looks droopy get the thermometer yeah you know it's just and sometimes it's the luck of the draw we try to catch as much as possible and i think we do a pretty good job yeah but um yeah that's what it comes down to they're not going to be like excuse me yeah <laughs> excuse I'm me ma'am well uh, yeah <laughs> i should be running right now but i'm not you yeah. know so it's really all four of us just scanning yeah. scanning scanning constantly in fact we uh you're busy in the mornings doing the chores feeding feeding the ewes their gra their hay and all of that and doing water and you know anything that needs to be cleaned up in the burn but we actually consciously take a few minutes 
just look around and just stand there and observe. Yeah. I mean, you're just constantly looking for problems. Yeah. You have to be. Yeah. And that's all year round. I mean, that's farming. We go out into the field when they're feeding themselves, when they're eating off the pasture, our only chore is to go out and observe our flock at, at their breakfast and make sure everybody gets up, you know, when yeah. we feel they should, that they look like they're moving, they're mo as mobile as they should be. Yeah. Um, and they won't tell you a thing. Uh, prey animals are designed they're to so not let you know that anything is wrong because if you're identified as a weak link, we know what happens. Yeah. If it's a pack of coyotes you're dealing with or whatever. So they, they, pur they purposely try to hide uh, anything that might be wrong. So it's our job to try to find that in spite of their <laughs> resistance yeah. to the idea. So, yeah. so that's it. So we've had a pretty typical year health issue-wise. Yeah. It's been pretty good. We've yeah. certainly had... Um, sort of barn wide more challenging issues in other years that we've had to yeah. deal with so so far so yeah. good yeah so we're kind of in the home stretch yeah and uh that's good because you're going on friday yes i'm going to the knitters frolic as we right. mentioned earlier right yeah so i'm very excited to be here <laughs> for a couple of days i'm not gonna lie i'm not quite as excited the worst i'm excited the for you yeah but the worse <laughs> the weather has gotten the more excited I am to go. Yeah. Anything, anywhere but here in this mud hole right yeah. now would be great. Um, and despite all of our talk about, you know, moving out to the country and the wonderful community and lifestyle that we enjoy, I mean, we do still enjoy the odd visit to the city, mm -hmm. too. And typically, mm -hmm. as far as we get to go, is maybe Truro or Halifax. Yeah, usually Truro, for a pot parasite workshop. Yeah, the bustling <laughs> metropolis of Truro, population 5,000. Yeah. Um, I don't know how, how how many Halifax would have now, three or four hundred? I guess. Thousand. Yeah. Uh, three or four hundred. Um, so that's where our parents still live. So we do get to go there. But yeah. when we go there, we just go to their house and we don't really get to take in too much. Just go to dinner. Yeah. yeah. So I'm uh, I'm staying in downtown Toronto. I'm kind of looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I mean, And you don't hard have drive to... there. I'm not driving. Yeah. So that's no. good. You're not going to be stuck in traffic. No, it is. And there's no transit to the venue, which I just... It's a little out of the way. There's transit, but it's a bus. Yeah. And if you have ever lived in Toronto or know anyone who lives in Toronto, having to take the bus is like the booby prize. <laughs> if it's not subway or streetcar accessible, the bus is the lowest form of public transit. Like you're in traffic. Yeah. Their buses are not big enough. No. Typically, you're standing. It's slow. You know, a subway is one thing, but a bus above ground in Toronto is a whole other beast. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's totally a level above, as far as I'm concerned. And I did commute in Toronto for 12 years, so mm -hmm. so I know a thing or two about public transit. So I'm not taking a bus. I'm actually going to spring for a cab. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Just make it easy on yourself. <laughs> it's going to be a long day standing up at the, yeah. at the booth, so I'm going to yeah. invest in my, in my sanity. It'll be great. Uh, you've already got some people saying that they're going to come and see you. Yeah, I'm so excited. Yeah. yeah, I know it's going to be a long day and exhausting, and it's going to be totally like just a lot of stimulation. Um, but yeah, it's going to be really fun, I yeah. think. So and I'm really looking forward to seeing everybody. Great. So go see Jennifer. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Great. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, right. everybody. Thanks. And uh, we hope, in spite of a little bit of an odd tone and format, that you still enjoyed this podcast. Right. And we'll be back two weeks from now with definitely much more knitting. Yes. Um, done. More sleep. Right. More stuff to talk about. More of everything. More we sunshine. Should, we should mention somebody asked if you had your camera fixed. Oh, my gosh. I got another phone. Yeah. So, I don't know what number I'm up to. Yeah. But four, I went I back a model um, to an iPhone 8, and it, of course, works perfectly. Yeah. And I, I don't ever want to talk about the iPhone 10 ever again. Right. So that'll be the last you'll hear of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dud. <laughs> anyway, this camera works perfectly, and I haven't dropped it yet. Right. So it also doesn't have a crack in it. Yeah. So that's important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Partly my fault. Partly Apple's fault. Yeah. That whole debacle. Right. All right. <laughs> not the fact that the iPhone 10 didn't work. That's not my fault. No. No. That's not your yes. fault. Yes. No, I'm not taking any responsibility that's for right. that at all. You were fine getting over the cracked lens. Yes. But just that was a supposedly easy problem to That's fix. right. Yes. Yeah. All right, everyone. Okay. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.